All right, guys, so welcome to 5.4, Graphing Data. And this section is actually going to be a math lab. So this is going to be a shorter video and just preparing you for, for the math lab that we're going to be doing next class. So today we're going to talk about graphing data sets now. So graphing some simple data sets. Uh, we'll talk about how to find useful scales for the X and the Y axis. We'll plot the points, and then we'll also talk about the difference between continuous and discrete variables. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, this is example one. It's asking us to graph the data. It's asking us if we'll join the points. So essentially they're asking us if this is a discrete or continuous uh, graph and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes uh, and then it's asking us if the graph represents a function and that's something we're familiar with because we did we did that in the previous lesson so let's look down here at the table uh, we have our domain here or our independent variable which is number of cans of juice uh, represented by n and then we have our dependent variable or our range which is the cost of the juice which is here so the first thing we need to do the first thing I like to do is to title my graph. So uh, here we're talking about uh, the relationship between how many cans I have and the cost of juice and, and the cost of those cans. So I'm going to say cost of juice cans. You should always, always label your tables. And now we need to do our values here. Now, if you remember from the previous lesson, our domain is always going to be on the bottom of the graph around the x-axis. And our range is always going to be on the y-axis. So let's start with the domain. Uh, here I have number of cans of juice, and I have 1 to 9. So I need to figure out a scale for this graph. And when we're plotting graphs, we like to use most of the graph that we're given. So. If I have 20 units here, or I have 20 individual lines, how can I fit 1 to 9 on 20 lines so that I fill up most of the space? And well, if I have 20 lines, if I'm going up to 9, and in fact, I'll round it up. So I'll say that I'll actually make the axis go all the way to 10. Well, essentially, I can use every other line will be one can of juice. So let's try that. So this will be zero. The second line will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that's perfect because now we're using most of the graph. So it's going to be nice and big and nice and clear. And our final step when labeling axes is to actually write what this represents. And in this case, this represents cans of juice. Just like that. Okay, for our range or for our dependent variable, we're talking about cost. Now here we're going to start. Uh, our first cost is two dollars and thirty-nine cents. So we'll start at zero, uh, and we're going all the way up to seventeen dollars and ten cents. So uh, again, I have twenty lines here, and I'm going all the way up to seventeen. And in fact, I'll round that up. I'll say that let's go up to twenty. Uh, so this one's pretty straightforward. If we have one dollar for every single line we'll get up to 20 and that'll use our graph that'll use the majority of our, of our of our graph of our axes so here we'll have one two and in fact i'm not going to draw every number maybe i'll draw every other so i'll go one two three four five six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen and 20 so that's perfect and then don't forget you always want to label your axes with what those values represent and in this case they represent the cost in dollars okay so now it's just a matter of plotting our graph here well, let's take our first point one can of juice is two dollars and 39 cents. <clears throat> so one can, $2, this would be $3, so it's somewhere 
we'll see somewhere here and I'll make that plot point a little bit bigger. Right there, perfect. Uh, three cans, $6.39. So, three cans for $6.39. We'll say that somewhere here. Uh, five cans, $10.39. 39. Uh, seven cans, 13.79. So seven cans, 13.79. So this is going to be 13 here. So 79 will be right about there. Uh, and nine cans are $17.10. So nine cans, $17.10 will be pretty close to here. All right. <clears throat> so now the graph, or now the the question asks, will we join the points? And it's asking us to justify our answer. And we'll talk about that briefly on the next slide. Uh, so let's go down to the second one. And does the graph represent a function? Well, we learned the other day that a function, a function is a relation where each domain is associated with only one element in the range. And we can see even by looking at this table that that is true. Each domain is only associated with one element in the range, and so therefore this is a function. And you can even see this on the graph. If the domains are down here, number of cans of juice, you can see that each number of can of juice is only associated with a single price. If this were not a function, we'd have an element in the domain associated with two prices, and that would look something like this. We would actually have uh, two domains. Let's say that we have five cans. We would have two points along five, because five would represent, let's say, six dollars and ten thirty-nine. But that isn't the case, so this table is, in fact, a function. Okay, do I connect the dots? So now we need to discuss discrete and continuous data. And this is important, so make sure you're writing this down in your notes. Uh, we have discrete and continuous data. Well, look at this chart over here that we just did. So the cost of cans of juice. Well, we know one can of juice is about, is just over two bucks. Uh, and there's probably a price for two cans, there's a price for three cans, there's a price for four cans, five cans. But the issue is, what if I put a plot point, what if I drew a line here between one and three, and in fact, what if I started at zero and drew a line like this? Does it make sense then, does it make sense that I would have a plot point here? A plot point here will represent half a can of juice being about a dollar. But I can't buy half a can of juice. So having a line drawn through these points doesn't really make sense because I can't have half a can of juice or one and a half a can of juice or two and a half a cans of juice. I can only have whole numbers of cans. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when we can't draw plot points between our data points, when it doesn't make sense, we have discrete data. So discrete data uh, is data whereby we cannot Draw points in between the given oops, the given values. So essentially, meaning if you can't draw a series of points between these values, if it doesn't make sense, then you have discrete data. And in this case it doesn't make sense. While we could probably draw one at four cans, it wouldn't make sense to draw one at four and a half or or three and a half or four and a half. And so we don't have a continuous 
graph here. We have a discrete graph. But if you look down here at world population, uh, here we have billions of people along this y-axis, and then we have the year along this bottom axis. Now, in this case, I can draw points in between. Because 1950 here is one data point, 1960 is another, but I could easily draw a data point here. This could represent 1955. I could draw another point between those that would represent 1952 in six months. I could draw a data point here, and that would make sense because the population is steadily increasing year after year, month after month, day after day. So it would make sense that we would have values between these plot points. And in that case, it would make sense to draw a line between these because there are significant values between these points. And therefore, we call this a continuous graph or continuous values. So continuous values, uh, this is data whereby you can draw, we'll say, significant points between given values. Good. Okay, so do this one on your own. This is a check your understanding question. Uh, they're going to ask you to plot these sets. So plot this table. I want you to title your graph, label your axes, plot all the points, and then you need to decide whether it's continuous or discrete. So are you going to draw a line between the points or are you just going to leave them the way they are? And then we'd like you to identify the independent and dependent variables for this graph. So pause the video here, and when you come back, we'll go through the answers. Okay. So we have our independent variable on the left. Uh, so this is our domain. Remember, if the table is drawn correctly, it's always going to be the set on the left. We have our dependent variable here, uh, which is temperature, and that makes sense because temperature depends on the altitude that we're at. Uh, and then we have our graph here. And this is a continuous graph, so we can draw a line in between because it does make sense to draw points between the data points that we're given. We can have, you know, 800 meters, we can have 600 meters, and that makes sense because as temperature is slowly increasing, we're going to have a different temperature for every meter, essentially, as it gradually increases. Good. So we'll see you in class. Make sure that you're bringing uh, all your materials, calculator, pencil, and then we'll be completing the math lab